be thinking about the table as a physical bulk manifest image table and as made of atoms and molecules at the same time is exactly what you're not supposed to do. <laughs> and you know, so you shouldn't be surprised that it's hard to do it. And I'm, I'm not sure if we have yet on the table a proposed criterion, a demarcation criterion for what is real and what is not real. Um, but mine, mine would be that something is real if it forms an important part of a useful way of talking about the actual world. So the present king of France. So is reality is contingent on utility. Well, uh, our description of reality is contingent on utility at the very least. So you, I certainly could imagine talking about reality in a way that never referred to the concept of the Constitution of the United States and would not be mistaken in any way. I could just list all the fermions and bosons and have them evolve according to Schrodinger equation. I would not be wrong, but I would be missing something really interesting and I. I can't come up with a better word than useful. Uh, I could talk about the atoms in this, in the molecules in uh, this atmosphere in our room right now, atom by atom, kinetic theory. Uh, I would be missing the opportunity to um, describe some very useful regularities about the behavior of the atmosphere of this room in terms of pressure and density and the laws of thermodynamics. And also, I have no right to think that the description in terms of atoms or fermions and bosons is the bottom one, right? I mean, there could be, and I don't want the, the reality of the atoms to depend on what year I'm talking about it. Uh, so I think that the, all the different levels in which we can talk about things, and we'll beat this to death this afternoon, uh, have a, a claim to reality that is essentially equally strong. But a lot of religious people will say that the notion of God is an important part of talking about it. Well, this. good. Anyway, so, and, and Stephen said God is real, in effect, right? Because everything is real, right? Well, so, only in the sense that Santa Claus is real. <laughs> but now, now, well, we haven't even defined naturalism yet in this conversation. But let me, let, me, let me give you a, a way to think about it. I mean, the question it seems to me that would come up from this is, um, let's imagine that this YouTube goes viral and all the fundamentalists in this country listen to it and... and Buy your story completely and burn down their churches. Okay. Now it, it would do no permanent good. Now, all right. Now, that's fine. But my, my point is the meaning of what you just said, the meaning of all of this stuff, well, it's not the sounds that were produced, it's the meaning of it. Um, and uh, it caused physical things to change in the world. Uh, radical, major restructuring of the matter and the face of the earth. Um, now, in that sense, I would say that the meaning is real. The meaning has causal efficacy, physical causal efficacy. But the meaning is going to be something that's not the sounds. It's not the movement of neurons. It's something else. And we haven't got a good way of talking about it yet, in fact. Uh, and the, the story I want to say is that I think, j just like we can't say that physics has bottomed out, um, certainly as an evolutionary biologist, I would say that our understanding of evolution is not bottomed out. Uh, there's a lot of processes there that we don't fully understand yet, and the more we've pursued it, the more we realize that Darwin's story is, in effect, uh, is agnostic about mechanism. And there's huge amounts of mechanistic stuff we've discovered that are making it a more complex story. If that's your story about the brain, uh, isn't it possible that vast amount of new information is going to come out about how the brain does it its job using complexity and, and various ways of talking about this process that don't look quite as simple as we've just talked about. My suspicion is that we will eventually call this teleology. It's not the kind of Cartesian teleology or the kind of God teleology, um, but it's, it's the real teleology that got me here. That is, I wanted to come here and, and chat with you guys, listen to it. That's real teleology as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's the same kind of teleology that's driving the story that I just told about, you know, fundamentalism. It's real. It makes a difference in the world. We just haven't come up with a good way to explain it. And I'm not convinced that we're ever going to do it by uh, just saying it's quarks and gluons.